You might be wondering why Bonfire went right back over $100 per copy just when it looked like people were going to be able to afford it. Well, you can blame that on the new TCG exclusive archetype that was revealed earlier this week, Ashton. We knew that a brand new and world premiere pyro archetype was coming in Phantom Nightmare, and honestly, my expectations were about as low as the floor after Tistina. But after doing a bit of research, thinking outside the box, and when you consider that Konami is clearly not done with Ashton, I think that, shockingly, this archetype has some potential. So as people noted, one of the first things you'll notice with Ashton is their absolutely amazing and breathtaking artwork, which actually doesn't resemble Yu-Gi-Oh at all, and looks far more like something akin to Dark Souls or from a From Software game. Konami actually gave Ashton a pretty badass lore too, which easily stacks up with the art. It's all about an eternal dragon that has planet destroying power, who fought a group of brave warriors and ended up mm, kind of like roasting the entire planet and turning everyone into ash, hence the name. It's actually pretty similar to what happens in Dual Terminal 1, where Trishula ends up freezing the entire planet, but obviously this dragon ends up burning everything in the cinder. The spirits of the warriors are basically in an eternal battle with the dragon, and thus the archetype and the storyline is born. When it comes to the actual cards themselves, so far the deck heavily revolves around two pieces. The Ashen City Field spell, which turns all your opponent's special summon monsters into pyrotype during your turn, will shuffle another copy of itself from your grave yard into your deck during the end phase so that you can draw a card and upon being destroyed or banished while in the field spell zone and that could be on either player's side of the field will special summon an ashton monster for you uh straight from your deck the other main component of course is that evil eternal planet torching dragon which sadly isn't actually a named ashen card but instead is vitals the eruption dragon of extinction Vitos has a really interesting effect that activates in the hand as a quick effect and that is during either player's main phase. This effect allows you to target one field spell on either player's field, then special summons itself as it blows up that targeted field spell. Vitos can then either add or set an Ashen Continuous Trap from your deck. When Vitos leaves your opponent's field and goes to your graveyard, you then can dark hole the field, so even though you are giving them this massive monster, they can't really synchro or link it off, otherwise it is going to blow up all their monsters. All the three Ashen main deck monsters can special summon themselves if the field spell is active Active on either side of the field. The Priestess is definitely the main starter monster for this archetype and she is sadly why you're going to need Bonfire considering she's the only level 4 or lower monster that the archetype has right now. She is straddles for everything in the deck. She can search any Ashen card so she can get you to basically anything that is not vital specifically. Uh, the King has mediocre stats, but he can special summon any Ashen monster from your deck outside of himself if your opponent controls a monster that has 2800 or more attack. Keep in mind this condition is pretty easily met, even turn 0 if you're going first, because you're going to give your opponent the Vitos, and then boom, you know, your opponent has that 2800 or attack monster on the field. Lastly, there's the Hero, who has pretty good stats and can destroy one Pyro monster your opponent controls during the main phase, and that is a quick effect, and then that will put uh, the field spell from the from your deck straight into the field spell zone. So the concept of the monsters is not completely apparent by just reading them, but once you understand what Konami is going for, it becomes a lot more clear. And that is to give your opponent Vidos, which Vidos, when it is summoned, is going to either search the continuous Ashen uh, trap card or it's going to set it on your field. You're going to special summon King off of the field spell because Vidos destroyed it to summon itself to begin with. And then since your opponent has Vidos, on the field you have met the king's condition which means he can summon priestess or hero straight from the deck depending on what card that you need is gonna i guess determine which one you go for and if you do go for hero you can pop the vitals at any time and that can dark hole your opponent's field which means they really can't commit all that much without fear of being nuked also because we are moving into a meta that's going to have a lot of pyro monsters mainly all these snake eye cards keep in mind that uh you know hero does actually serve as removal for pretty much all of them so if your opponent just has a snake eye card on the field and you don't want to deal with that you can just use his removal effect on any of those guys the continuous trap eternity once it's activated lets you either add vitals or any ashen monster from your graveyard to your hand which i think makes a lot of sense considering the dragon does have a dark hole like effect uh, built into it so you might need some recovery at some point if he does happen to blow up some of your monsters it's not that bad you can just get them back or you can just get the vitals it's 
itself back. It has another effect that lets you take any monster your opponent controls that is owned by you. So after you special summon the vitals to their field, it's not a big deal. Once again, you can just snatch steal it right back. And I think that this effect is going to be really useful in the battle phase specifically because if your opponent just says, you know, enter battle phase and they try to like run over your hero so that he can't use the pop effect because that's only in the main phase, this is a way of basically stopping that. You can just take the dragon. You don't have to worry about taking any battle damage or losing out on that removal effect. Kind of similar to how, you know, your opponent will have like SP Little Knight on the field. And rather than like playing or anything like that, you'll see people just go, you know, cast your unicorn attack and run it over so they don't have to worry Worry about dealing with the effect it's the same type of deal here the third effect uh that's kind of built into the snatch deal effect is a little bit of a debuff where all your opponent's monsters will lose 2700 attacks so it makes it very difficult for them to ever run over your stuff at least in the turn you activate that effect last is the quick play spell awakening which is actually an insane one card combo for the deck awakening lets you put the ashen field spell in either field spell zone then searches the vital dragon now it does lock you in the pyro from the extra deck for the remainder of the turn and that kind of sucks because it eliminates the extra deck powerhouses like sp little knights but i do think that this also signals that we're probably going to be getting some ashen extra deck monsters in the next set so with awakening you're going to put your city in your opponent's field spell zone you're going to search your vitos you're going to pop that city and then you're going to set the trap on your field you're going to trigger the city to summon king since your opponent does have vitals on the field and you've met its condition king is going to summon okay let's say hero in this instance from your deck and then you can pop vitos you can get another copy of ashen city you can put that on your field spell which in turn during the end phase is going to shuffle the first copy back so that you can just get yourself a free draw and then during your opponent's draw phase you can activate the eternity continuous trap you can add the vitals back to your hand and technically this is like a plus five in terms of card advantage but more importantly it starts the entire loop over again you're going to be setting up that dark hole like scenario with vitals and since you did go ahead and you added vitals back um, in your hand during your opponent's draw or standby phase, it means that when your opponent starts their turn, if they want to activate like a field spell, you know, one of these field spells that search like all the visas cards or something like that, you can use vitals and you can pop their field spell. So technically vitals can be like a double disruption at that point. Your opponent can activate like pressure planet. You can just pop it and you still kind of have like the dark hole like play set up. For right now, that's definitely the archetype's best play and you know it's no slouch because again it is a plus five in terms of card advantage and it can offer two forms of disruption even though both disruptions are essentially tied to the big vitals dragon itself i think that the archetype definitely feels unfinished and you know it's not really that big of a deal considering it only has one set under its belt but unlike Tistina, and i guess to a large extent Godi, even though Godi is kind of being fixed now with the phantom nightmare support but pre-phantom nightmare Godi was definitely in this category you know with uh, ashen you can at least see a coherent game plan and it's easy to understand what the deck does how it achieves it and what cards you need to like execute the plan i think the archetype definitely is going to need a good extra deck monster or two because if the most powerful starter is going to lock us in the pyros for the remainder of the turn it'd be kind of nice if they compensated us for that and also another continuous trap card because again right now all the disruption in this archetype is tied directly to vital and it'd be nice to have another form of disruption i think if you're gonna play it uh pure like if you're gonna play pure ashen it definitely works albeit you're probably gonna need to find those disruptions outside of the uh you know core engine so you're probably gonna need to play hand traps or finra you know maybe some bestial monsters to get other disruptions but i think that this archetype definitely has potential and it's at least easy to see like what it's trying to do which again is way more than we could say about something something like Tistina. So uh, yeah, I'm definitely liking what Konami's doing here. You guys let me know what you think of Ashen in the comment section below. Also, side note, screw you Konami for making us buy $100 bonfires when there's literally only one card in this archetype that can be searched with bonfires. So yeah, if you're going to give us another main deck monster, it has to be level four or lower. Anyways, thank you guys for watching as always.